Let's say that you're the PM for Tiltbrush. This is Google's VR painting app. And just walk me through your prioritization process. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Exponent product management mock interview. On today's show, we have Cherry and we're gonna be doing a analytics or execution type question. Um, before we get into the question though, Cherry, can you just let the audience know who you are? Hi everyone, uh, I'm Cherry. I'm a former PM at Google. I've worked on products like YouTube VR and Google Maps. I'm super excited to be here today. Awesome, so the question that we have today is going to be, Let's say that you're the PM for Tiltbrush. This is Google's VR painting app. And just walk me through your prioritization process. Oh, awesome, cool. Um, so uh, just to, to clarify, I'm the product manager for Tiltbrush. Um, and Tiltbrush is a, a VR painting app that Google makes in, in, on VR apps, I guess. So uh, that would be like Oculus, th those kind of things. Um, and I'm gonna walk you through how I think about prioritizing uh, for building features for this platform. Yeah, exactly. Sweet. Um, well, to start, I guess uh, I, I want to clarify the themes relevant to this product. Um, from there, then, you know, I can discuss my prioritization criteria and establish that framework that I use to make the decisions. Um, and then uh, I'll, I'll walk through some, some prioritization inputs, inputs and, and feature examples. We can put that framework uh, to test uh, with a couple items that, you know, the team might be interested on taking on for the quarter or for the year, like assuming we're doing quarterly planning or maybe roadmap planning for 2021, 2022 or something like that. Yep, yeah, yeah, these assumptions are good. Sweet. Um, so, all right, clarifying themes relevant to uh, Tilt Brush VR. Uh, well, in this scenario, um, I'll just walk through some of my thoughts and assumptions um, just regarding Tilt Brush, uh, keeping in mind uh, the broader set of, of themes and goals that you know the company so Google is focusing on. Uh, that way we can be sure that even for a product as small as ours, uh, we're aligned with the larger vision, right? Uh, when it comes to prioritization, I, I generally want to start at a pretty high level, uh, establish which themes make the most sense for the product in its current stage, in its life cycle, before you know, we are looking at features or looking even at bug fixes, that kind of thing. Um, so on the VR landscape, um, VR is still considered a relatively new technology, even though it's been around a couple of years, I'd say. Um, there's, still, there's still things that haven't been solved for it to go mainstream. Um, like motion sickness, the overhead of having put on the headset. If I were to give it a rough estimate um, from my existing knowledge of VR, I'd say there's, there's probably been about 10 million uh, headset units sold worldwide, let's say 10 million. Um, and, and I'll, I mean, we're, we're thinking like first world country, you have time and you have money to spend on VR. So um, from there, let's, let's just assume, just keep it super simple. 10% uh, of those are used on, actively used on a regular basis, right? 90% uh, of users probably got it, tried it on, thought it was crazy cool, uh, put it aside in a box and it's sitting there untouched in their house. Um, okay, so that's like a user base of 1 million at best. Uh, and, and why does this matter? I guess like, Usually when I'm clarifying a theme, uh, one of the questions I, I might ask or assume would be, oh, do we have some you know, larger company objective of Google wants to increase re ad revenue by 25% this year, right? Um, and you know, from there we could frame our prioritization of Tilt Brush's roadmap to support this. Uh, but in our situation today, um, is it fair to say that you know, instead of ad revenue with, with a user base of 1 million at best, um, Maybe we care more about user acquisition and engagement um, versus monetization, you know, given how early this product is. Yeah, so I liked how you laid this out. So we're definitely still in the very early innings. Um, so adoption engagement definitely is the goal here. Sweet. Yeah, okay. But um, I guess user acquisition, right? I, I just said we have a cap of about 1 million active users. Um, so that's still not great. And, you know, Tilt Brush costs, I think, 20 bucks. Um, that's a hurdle too. So uh, I'm just gonna clarify this a little bit more before we get into the nitty gritty. Uh, honestly, at this stage, I think if we want VR as a, as a, on the whole to be successful, uh, then we need to be doing more than just um, like, let's expand tilt brush. Uh, we want to just doing all that we can, we want to be doing all we can uh, to get, you know, help more users get a headset. Um, so we wanna be building something that other people see and go, oh, whoa, what's that cool uh, VR painting app thing, right? I wanna try that. Maybe I'll get a VR headset just for that. Uh, we want to really encourage engagement and conversation 
and just push and explore this medium. Um, and, and my take is that this is a pretty fun and different theme um, than most products out there where, you know, since Tilt Brush is owned by Google, there actually is this luxury of being more than, you know, just monetization. We, we have, we can explore and we can expand VR um, and focus on something, you know, without this, this like sense of, uh, we only have a runway of like a hundred dollars or something like that before money runs out and we have to close our company, right? Um, so I'd say our theme should be to engage, excite, and you know, acquire as many VR users as possible at, at a high level. Does that sound okay with you? Yeah, yeah, this sounds good. So I'm kind of curious now where you might go from this. Yeah, um, and you know, of course I want to take in information and make decisions that's best overall for the company, lest I risk just sounding like, yeah, we're going to have a great time and just, you know, prioritize without thinking about money. Um, you know, we will think about that, but for the... For, for now on, you know, I'll, I'll assume that I'll regularly sync with upper management to, um, to make sure that I'm understanding the, the themes that the company is focusing on uh, for the quarter. And, and the goal is really to make sure that no one is surprised we're building something later on. And that's, that's an important detail to spend time on here because I'll keep that in mind throughout the rest of my prioritization process. Um, and while strategies and criteria can be subjective to each PM, um, just being cognizant of the fact that, you know, any broader high level initiative from a company will have external impact on how I think about prioritizing within my team. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I think we've um, everything you've laid out definitely makes sense with me. I think we spent enough time on on this sort of a high level look and I'm kind of curious where you might go with the prioritization. For sure. Let's dive into discussing uh, prioritization criteria. Um, the other thing to keep in mind as a PM is I, I don't expect to have infinite time for prioritization. Um, and I, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole of taking account of every little thing. So I want to keep things simple while being straightforward um, and just make decisions and get a move on to start building and not blocking. Um, so I'll walk through my general set of criteria that I'm going to use as a baseline for this question, right? Um, and, you know, these aren't necessarily set in stone and that's it because in a real world situation, I would, of course, discuss with my team to see which criteria we would collectively use to prioritize and work on. As I see it, um, prioritization is, is a process that the PM owns, but collaborates closely with coll colleagues on. Uh, okay, back to my criteria. I have three main buckets. Um, one, impact, right? How impactful is this feature going to be to the users um, based on the theme we chose to focus on, right? And not necessarily impact monetary, from a monetization standpoint, but impact on users. So questions, sub questions there are, you know, one, what value does it bring to the customers? Um, and, you know, this is one of the difficult things to gauge is whether or not it delivers enough value to be worth the time. Um, and, you know, if this is an epic addition to the product and we know our users need it, uh, then, yeah, it's worth to move to the top of the list. When, when we're judging a feature, for example, a, a new dashboard with very advanced metrics um, and it won't impact a majority of users, then um, I think it's really important to consider, you know, what do we need those metrics for? Is it more important than features that can serve a user directly and have that direct user impact? So what's a, what's a pitfall if we're trying to optimize for like how much time someone's spending on the app? Uh, sorry, could you clarify that question in terms of a pitfall? Yeah, so what are some downsides to trying to optimize for time spent? Yeah, I think the, the tough thing about time spent um, specifically with regards to VR is we, we know that it can be uncomfortable. And the worst thing is for a user to leave a VR experience feeling like that was nauseating or that was really uncomfortable and I don't want to do that again. And when, when we're making that conscious decision of like, let's try to get a user to spend an hour in the app, if that hour makes, they leave it feeling like, I don't feel so good, even though it was really fun, um, that's a really powerful human sensation that you're not going to be able to fix. Like that, that will deter people from turning off. So I think specifically with, with VR, a big pitfall is like, I don't know if the time um, that we are, the, the metric that we're optimizing for is necessarily time in app, right? Um, that's, that's kind of a scary thing to say, like, that's our, that's our end all be all. Like we want to have users spend uh, 10 hours in app every, every week, because uh, I think we want to consider both the health and, and the, the safety of the, the users as well. Yeah, definitely makes sense for the long-term health of the product as well. Um, so if we're going to switch gears more towards um, impact, so under impact, you also mentioned user value. Um, what's the value that users want to leave with when they use Tilt Brush? 
Yeah, I think this this depends um, on different customer segments as well, right? For a new user, the value of trying a very cool VR app for the first time, you leave with this experience of like, oh, this was great. I want to try this again, or I want to try something different, or um, the world of VR seems limitless to me, right? We're kind of expanding and, and making VR known in a sense. We're taking something familiar. Everybody has a sense of like what it's like to paint with a, a crayon or whatever. Um, but putting it in a very new experience. And so if for a new user, uh, impact would be giving them that phenomenal first time. This is familiar, but different, but very exciting for me. And I want to continue trying different VR things. I want to continue using this app, right? Or this medium. Uh, for an experienced uh, VR user, right? A pro, um, what we might be interested in providing is actually a platform and something that they can continue to, to develop their, their skills on, right? Like if let's say I'm, I'm now I'm thinking, okay, this is a VR artist who has used other competitor apps. Like I know that Oculus has Quill um, and there are some sculpting apps, right? So what can we as Tilt Brush bring to this experienced pro in VR uh, that will make our painting app uh, very valuable to them and deliver impact where they feel I can, I can use this app and I can get what I, I can do something in it that I can't do in other apps, right? Does that so, kind of make sense? Yeah, so what I'm hearing from you is that we just want to help unleash the user's creativity and that's what they should really leave with. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Um, what are the second and third buckets? Right. So my second bucket is really, um, you know, urgency. How urgent is it for us to be building this feature now versus later, right? Um, and some sub questions here are, you know, are we bound to an external timeline? Is there a significant marketing um, and or press opportunities available if we, you know, finish this now versus later? Um, is this blocking us from doing something else? Therefore, we need to take it on first. I feel like that's that's what I consider in terms of urgency, right? Um, for the last bucket, it would be effort. Um, and this is, you know, how long will it take for our product team, for our engineering team to build this feature? Um, is this something that can be developed and implemented and tested within a few days or even in a week and we have the bandwidth and it's a low hanging fruit? Then yeah, you know, we do it, right? Will it take a enormous amount of planning, testing, and team hours to build? Uh, you know, then we need to really review it on a deeper level and, and just understand, you know, what kind of impact is it going to have? What's the urgency here um, before we allocate such a big chunk of the team to it? So broadly speaking, let's say you did some ranking or t-shirt sizing um, on some ideas, and how would you balance a feature that is high impact but also high effort versus maybe uh, medium impact but low effort? So high impact, high effort, I, I, this, this is also, I think, quite subjective to the team, like something that we, and, and, and the stage in terms of when you're rolling this out. If I have, you know, two engineers and we're, we're trying to get some, some updates out, but this large impact feature and um, large effort is going to take those two engineers and they won't be able to do anything else, then we, we need to put that aside, right? But let's say we, we have the flexibility. Um, I think it's a matter of, you know, we, we go up to the, the impact and consider what, what's the importance of the timeline um, for the impact that we're trying to get. Um, so you mentioned, you know, uh, medium, medium impact, medium effort, and high impact, or was it medium effort? Yeah, medium impact, low medium effort. effort. Low oh, effort. low effort versus um, high impact, high effort. Then we, we consider that bucket of urgency. Like, is there, for, for each of these, is there, is there one that um, we're going to see some advantage if we push this out the door first? Can we get some small advantage there um, and go from there? I don't think there's a, like, it, that's the thing about prioritization. It's always a matter of, like, we'll put out all the variables and then we make a decision that we could go down the road and figure, oh, like, maybe it would, be, would have been better if we invested everybody and put them into the high effort, high impact. But I think just we'll, we'll make a decision based on the variables that we have on the table. And if we see, um, you know, maybe we come to the conclusion that the, the medium level uh, impact is worth it sooner um, because, you know, it takes less time to build and we'll roll with that, uh, then, then we'll go with that in the meantime. It, it's a bit rough to, uh, to kind of, um, to approximate this without a concrete example. I'll, I'll get to that. Maybe like we can discuss the, uh, a concrete example and, and some ideas that I'll toss out and, and see how yeah. things apply. Sure. Uh, but in general, like, yeah, like you said, in terms of this t-shirt sizing, sizing um, I've got impact, urgency, and effort. And, and maybe from there, we'll, we'll just say I'll create a quantitative 
a scale of like one to five for impact and effort, uh, sorry, impact and urgency. And for effort, we'll just use t-shirt size, small, medium, large. Um, you know, we can expand this even further. And if, depending on the situation, add different weighting, weighting percentages to each of these criteria. Um, so like, like I kind of mentioned, the effort bucket definitely looks different and is weighted differently depending on the engineering team. Um, do I have two engineers or, you know, do I have a team of 40 engineers on hand and ready to go, right? Then it's, it's much less of a like, okay, this, this urgency and this trade-off thing. Um, so yeah, I mean, if I had a whiteboard on hand and we were in the same room, I would love to be able to just write these three things up on the board so we can always have them right on the side as we just start discussing these different ideas and, and items to prioritize later. Um, and I also just want to highlight before we dive in um, that I'm, I'm pretty strongly against the idea of a PM disappearing into a cave for a week and, and popping out with a list like, okay, everyone, here's our priorities for the quarter. Um, yeah, it's all been decided. It, time to get working. Um, while the PM is the decision maker, uh, you know, you need to discuss with your team and you need to get their opinions as well. Um, what we do with this, with establishing this criteria is, is just setting the team up to be, to have this productive and, and guided conversation from which, you know, we determine what needs to be moved to the front um, or when something needs to be removed from the roadmap. I hope you enjoyed this practice product management mock interview with Kevin and Cherry. We've included some analysis, conversation, and tips that Kevin and Cherry talked about after the interview in our exclusive membership at our website, tryexponent.com. With our membership, you'll not only get access to the analysis of this mock interview video that you watched, but you'll get access to hundreds more videos just like this one, as well as access to our courses, our interview question database, and our peer-to-peer -peer mock interview practice platform, where you can practice with a partner every single day. So check it out at tryexponent.com to get our full membership and to see the analysis of this video. Regardless, I wish you good luck with your upcoming interviews.